Hello again. Um, in case you're just joining us, my name is Alba Germán. I'm from Córdoba, Argentina. I work in a research institute in the Spatial Agency of Argentina in environmental um, science applications of uh, mostly geospatial information and, and you know, satellite images. Uh, now I am going to present Rosa Aguilar. Ro Rosa Aguilar is a computer in system engineering. She has led teams and become chief technical officers at the Geographic Institute in Venezuela. She's currently doing her PhD in, in urban planning and her main interests are in machine learning algorithms for image classification and collaborative spatial planning. She's going to present uh, OGITO, an open geospatial interactive tool to support collab collaborative spatial planning. So we welcome Rosa. Hello, Rosa, how are you? <laughs> Myself. Uh, okay. Hello, Alba, thank you. You're welcome. Can you please? Okay. Yes. You. We yeah. We we'll leave you to it. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. Um, thank you very much, Alba, for this introduction. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I'm going to present an open geospatial interactive tool that we have developed um, during my PhD research. And also, I will present a community mapping based case. I structure, uh, I structure this talk in um, five parts. First, I would like to talk a little bit about me. Then I will introduce the topic. Um, following, I will describe the method that we applied that basically is a combination of agile software development and human-centered design. Finally, I will present the results, um, basically the OGITOS architecture. OGITOS mean Open Geospatial Interactive Tool. So I will present the, the architecture and the evaluation uh, that we did. And at the end, I will give us some space to uh, questions and present our future world, basically our current world. Uh, a little bit about me, as Alba mentioned, I am a computer system engineer. I am originally from Venezuela, where I work uh, for several years as a researcher and development professional. I have a master in computer science, also in geoinformatics. Um, yeah, I, I become a CTO at the Geographic Institute in Venezuela, where I learn a lot and travel a lot. Um, my main interest is in machine learning, uh, and I am interested in study uh, crops and cities, dynamic uh, in the cities, uh, through machine learning algorithms, ensemble classifiers, and so on. Also, my PSC is uh, in urban planning, where I I'm interested in stakeholder uh, engagement in collaborative spatial planning. I've been involved uh, since um, uh, some years uh, with the QGIS community as a translator and documenter. Well, what is this me, my research about? Um, basically, uh, spatial planning is related to uh, the location of resources in the in in the earth or i mean facilities the resources and these uh, special planning problems require people participation people that can have different background different knowledge type and this is difficult to put all together and discuss the problem and find a solution or just to create awareness so previously planning support tools were seen as tools to find an optimal solution. But recently, with the um, turn, with the shift to the communicative part, then planning support are seen also as a mean to enable communication between a stakeholder, to promote social learning, and to um, create awareness about a problem. But the problem is that given there is a lot of research about planning support tools, but they still are not widely used in practice. This is known so, as the uh, implementation gap. Recently, there is a tool that is relatively new that it was found to be useful to engage stakeholders in collaborative spatial planning uh, processes. And this is called the map table or a map table. As we can see in the figure, 
A map table is a horizontal large screen that enable display geospatial content and enable users to interact with this content. The problem is that there are not so many tools to that can be exploited in these devices and the tools that are existent may be lack of spatial analysis capabilities or um, they are not uh, completely open source. Also, uh, it was found that not all the time the end user is involved in the development of such tools. That's why there is a mismatch between what end users want and what the research community is um, providing. To tackle this problem, we adopted a human-centered design approach. What is this? This is basically to get the user involved through the whole process of the development. We started the cycle understanding and specifying the context of use. We use for this meetings and documentation review to understand for which process this tool can be used. Then we um, get the users to write the stories and we build prototypes with them and they evaluate these prototypes, high fidelity prototypes, meaning that this is a working software already. So they review these um, software prototypes and provide feedback. This feedback allow us to adjust the workflow to uh, increase usability. For example, when we detected that there were too many clicks to accomplish a task. So we collect this feedback with our users and produce design solution in an agile fashion. This means uh, we uh, code for for example, four weeks, and then after four weeks, we had a meeting. And then in this meeting, our user tested the platform, tested the working code, and provided us feedback. Also, we detected some bugs. After all this cycle, when we reach certain point that we uh, complete, we finish like, okay, this is a, a, a valuable product, this is a minimum product that can be exploited. Then we wanted to evaluate a solution with real stakeholders, with real participants in a real case study. To do that, we went to, um, we evaluate this uh, tool that is, as I mentioned, open geospatial interactive tool in two case studies for community mapping in two villages in Sumatra, Indonesia. Before going there, going to the field work, we also tested in a control environment. This means that we use our staff in the university um, uh, students to provide also feedback. As you may know, in a planning workshop, we have a sequence of activities and a post workshop questionnaire. This post workshop questionnaire aims to evaluate the usability of the tool. So we first tested with our internal, let's say, staff and students to see if the questionnaire was clear and the sequence of the activities were logical. Then we finally proceed to conduct the fieldwork. To, uh, to do the evaluation, we also uh, configure a framework, let's say. Uh, we understand usability as the extent to the, the tool can be used with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. But we also contextualize these measures for a participatory tool because the map table is, um, the objective is to be used in, in a group work, in a collaborative manner. So we measure effectiveness, for example, as perceived participation, how users perceive that they were really active in the process and how, uh, how complete with, where was the map that they produce. Also, um, efficiency we measure as ease of use and learning time and satisf satisfaction as the general attitude of participants toward the tool. I have to say that these usability measures were self-report in a questionnaire. Uh, the context of use, of course, we specify the conditions, the goals. What was the goal when using Ogito? Ogito was used to produce collaborative, collaboratively a village map and a intervention proposal maps. This means by law, these villages in Indonesia require to produce a community map. These maps are used in a budgetary process that is called the Museum Bank. And then 
each community has to produce these maps. So they had specific tasks, that is mapping the current situation, the infrastructure, the roads, land use. Also, they have to agree in uh, proposal developments for the community. Uh, facilities, what is needed, and annotate possible conflicts, for example, when there are different boundaries between villages or communities. And the environment where Ogito was used, it was a map table based planning support system workshop. Our main result is, of course, the architecture of the application. And this is um, a very simple architecture. We have three components a uh, front end that is uh, code in Angular. Uh, framework. I use Angular framework. Of course, they have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Hammer for supporting gesture movements. Uh, the backend is um, basically QGIS server uh, on top of Apache web server. QGIS server provides services for WMS and WFS transaction. And the database, for this case, we decided to use shapefile, just plain shapefile. And this decision obeyed that uh, we wanted to keep the complexity as minimum so people can get, uh, can adopt the tool and use by themselves without having to install a um, database manager, management system or so. The layout of Ogito, this version is quite simple. If you can, as you can see, the, the, the main element or the central element is the, the map. And we use uh, high resolution um, images as background. So, because the idea was the participants can draw on top of this map and then can, they can recognize uh, the surrounding. So, the main element is, is, a, is a map. We have uh, used uh, the scale, zoom in, zoom up. All these um, interface respond to touch gesture so there is no need for a mouse or for a keyboard so we have the layer panels where the user can perform the normal task with the uh, show and high layers reorder layers visibility and so on then we have an editing panel where the users can draw lines points or polygons this layer is adaptive, so according to the type of geometry of the, of the layer, then the tools uh, show some icons. If the layer is uh, lines, then the, the user can just select a line and, and draw in a freehand mode, because this was a requirement just to, to draw in a freehand, not like a, the, the normal uh, clicking uh, style of a GIS software. So we wanted to do this in a more natural manner for users. With the symbology, uh, it was just this the design in a way that the user can just click in one of the symbols and then you don't have to specify the type of uh, row that you are just drawing. No, because you directly uh, select the symbol and it's show in the map. And finally, we have a, a toolbar that can be used to activate the editing mode of a layer and go back to the to the home, the Zoom home, that is that is show the full extent of the study area. What was possible with this version? With this version, it was possible just do uh, was map navigation, so means zoom out, pan, rotate, all of this with touch enable using the the regular pinch, unpinch, and pan, moving or do the layer management, layer visibility, reorder the layers, and data input, draw lines, marker, move, and delete elements. As I mentioned, we uh, selected case case study in two villages in Sumatra, Indonesia, where people use themselves the platform. So there was a mi minimum guidance and they uh, they conducted the task by themselves. In these two workshops, two villages, uh, we have basically people uh, in the age range between 30 and 50 years old. The education was not that, um, how to say, it mostly was uh, high, um, uh, high school, not uh, a lot of um, university or more uh, highly educated. There was a high school level. Um, the, we can say that they were not, uh, the literacy was a, a bit low because they report, they self-reported that they were not so used to um, operate uh, computers or digital maps. 
this uh, however they engage together in the process in the activity during one day in each village to produce collaborative three maps i'm showing two of them one of the maps is the current situation that this it, uh, this is related to the infrastructure as i mentioned before infrastructure land use um yeah all the facilities roads etc so they gather together and discuss during the the workshop to this element and locate and produce these maps that is in the uh, image uh, in the left in the right we have the map that is called the development proposal this is quite interesting um, map because by requirements they, this budgetary process that is called the Muslim Bank, they are required to agree in which are the needs or the main, the priorities for the community. In this case, one of the community requests um, to pave a road that can facilitate the transportation or the communication between two villages. So there was an existing dirty road. They wanted to make it a pavement make pay and another uh, requirement was to uh, improve the drainage system in one of the roads because it was damaging the infrastructure so the community was concerned about this and they just paused and discussed and argue between them i mean uh, finding proposal finding solution for their own community community this is an example of a bottom up process that it is that was supported by these um, uh, tool. Regarding the evaluation, moving the evaluation, we conducted first uh, all this process with the end user in the center, uh, asking them for feedback, doing these iteration cycles of development, and then we they review. Com they was coming back, um, back and forward uh, in this dialogue between the end user and the development party. So. When this, uh, when the tool went uh, was evaluated, it was really high. Uh, the usability was highly rated, and uh, we think that this was because of this process of engagement with the end user. So, as uh, uh, stated before, we evaluate effectiveness as perceived uh, completeness of the map and perceived participation. Also, the evaluation means the effectiveness means that that you can do the task that you are supposed to do. And every uh, as we can see in the in the graph, in for both villages, the rates are quite high. Use uh, participants strongly agree or agree that they could conduct all the tasks that they were supposed to do. Regarding um effective uh, efficiency we measure as easy of use and then we we present in this table the rates that we can see also that it was quite high for both villages in all the tasks we separate the tasks just how they can use the map for navigation for drawing for delete and in overall how they perceive the easy of use of the tool and we are really uh, satisfied with the results as as you can see in this uh, part Finally, uh, satisfaction was evaluated as the attitude, self-attitude reported toward the product. And again, we also get a high rate in this uh, case. These results are good, are really satisfying, but also we reflect on the process and all that we got from this, um, how to say, experience. Uh, we can say that the, in both workshops, the female participation was uh, almost null. Um, we had no influence in the call. The workshops were arranged, organized by the communities, so we didn't have any influence in this call. So one thing to address in the future is that we can make sure to provide a safe environment or how to say, um, relax or friendly environment for females so they can also uh, participate maybe perhaps in a different workshop in a, a part workshop where also the voice of female can be heard we also noticed that elderly prefer not to interact with the app even when we encourage them to do so they said no we 
prefer to leave the uh, operation to the young people. Although they engage in the discussion, they provide feedback because this is the knowledge that we uh, were also interested in capture the knowledge of the elderly, so they know more the village, you know, history. So they were actively participating, but they didn't, they prefer to uh, delegate the operation of the tool to the young people. How we can tackle this, we can maybe provide more time, more guidance, and also uh, make them to feel comfortable so they cannot, uh, how to say, feel that they can break the tool or anything. Uh, something else is that we, the application didn't address power relations, so we delegate this to the moderation. In a planning workshop, there are a chauffeur that is in charge of guide activities, so the power relationships is not directly addressed by digital tool. Another interesting reflection is that less is more. As a software developer, I, I am keen to add more and more functionality and I wanted to make uh, the interface uh, perhaps more comprehensive but um, we also have to stop and look who is asking for this functionality so perhaps this is going to complicate the interface and it's going to confuse our user so we keep the interface simple and straightforward. The current version of Okito can be seen in this. There is a video available in this address. We are uh, working now in another cycle of agile co-creation for another case study that we aim to address noise action planning. Um, we also aim to extend our framework because we evaluate for this case only usability but in the sec in the, the next uh, in the in our current work we aim to also evaluate usefulness and this is uh, related to responsible design because a, a tool can be usable but it, it has to be also useful so for what are we designing or what is the purpose so uh, in this case we see uh, that the tool was useful because people produced the maps and they were uh, use in the budgetary process and also the communities that didn't have a map, they could have another a digital way that can be used to analyze the situation and exploit. It was more than just an illustration. Um, it's interesting because I remember I had an experience with an elderly person that he was so grateful that we took the time to map uh, his community. So it's important to be on the map. So finally, um, I can say it, if you have questions, comments, uh, we can have a sure, uh, of course, this space is now. Uh, also, you can reach me in uh, my um, LinkedIn profile. And if you can see more of Ogito, the video, or visit our website, well, the links is there. So the space is now for questions. Thank you, Rosa. That was very nice presentations. Ogito looks very nice. I really like the part that you can uh, just draw with your hands. I think that's very, very innovative. And for this kind of uh, people that is not very used to maybe GIS software or, or they, this kind of interface, I think this is a great approach. So I really like that. <laughs> Let's see in the questions. There is uh, one question that is there. They are asking if it's possible to download the application or it's not yet. The application is not yet um, available for download. We are working now, as I mentioned, in a, in a new case study. And I will be finishing my PhD at the end of, of this year uh, as part of the open science and open the open science vision of um, the University of Twente, um, the ITC faculty, we aim to open the code also to encourage collaboration because we think, um, and I am an active member of the open source community, so we can get more collaboration and uh, just open the code so everybody can just contribute. But it is not yet available, unfortunately, but it's going to be soon. Okay, that's great. Okay, please uh, post your questions in the pool questions. Um, I don't see yet uh, new questions. Let's wait a little bit. 
Are you planning to try the app again in another community? Yes. As, uh, uh, okay. In another community right now, no, there are no plans. I'm working now in the noise action planning and mm -hmm. it's going to be um, next uh, week <laughs> that nice. we have already the nice the, the second version let's say but this is for noise action planning so but the the tool is there so all the functionality is uh, available so yeah if there is uh, another case uh, we will happy to contribute to collaborate uh, and explore possibilities okay that's great Where, where were these villages that you showed? Sorry, I lost the, the, the location of villages. It was in Sumatra, Indonesia. Ah, okay. Okay, that's nice. Okay, uh, there is a comment in the chat. Uh, thanks, Rosa, fantastic work. Looking forward to testing it myself and in our community work from uh, Mir Rodriguez Lombardo. Great. There is also another question. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood it correctly. Was the use case for community annotations of maps or for community input in, for example, city planning? Um, okay, this is, um, I will explain again. The, the, pro, the budgetary process required that the villages has to produce a village map. So we develop this tool, they can produce these maps themselves. So, um, okay, and in this case, they map the current situation. At the same time, they also produce another map where they locate the intervention they wanted to, to the communities. I mean, where the budget, they would they would uh, desire, they wish the budget to be allocated. So they produce this other map to a specific intervention. I couldn't say that it was city planning. Um, it was mostly where they can put a, a specific intervention for for the resources allocation. Okay, I, I don't know if it does uh, respond to the question. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if not, maybe the person who did it can ask another one, but I think it was clear. Very nice application. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, we uh, can say goodbye to Rosa and thank her for her very nice presentation. It was very nice to have you here. So I hope to see you in, in another session. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. And Bye. if somebody can yes. reach me by mail or my LinkedIn. Thank you. Perfect. Bye. Bye.